Hey everyone, welcome back to Scale Factory. This is it, the final part of our Trust Factoring System series. In this video, we'll bring everything together. We'll start by preparing the design for 3D printing in Bamboo Lab Studio. Then print the parts on the Bamboo Lab P1S. After that, I'll guide you through the assembly process, connecting the servos and the motor. And finally, we'll test the system to see how it performs. If we have followed the series, thank you for coming along on this journey. And if you are new here, be sure to check out the earlier parts to see how we got to this exciting final stage. Let's jump right in and make this project come to life. Ok, let's get started by hiding the components that we don't want to print. So the only visible ones will be exported as STL files. Ok, this is more or less the things that we wanted to print, but fasteners are there, we will hide them too. Ok, now it looks ok. Uh, we could export these files, these models. STL file. I will name it TVC. Ok. Now, uh, I already imported the files. Uh, in Bamboo Lab. The whole geometry comes as one object, but we can divide it by using that part to object command. Now, see in Bamboo Lab using that command, you can that arrange all objects, actually just divides it to manifolds, that separate objects. I'm checking the orientation once again. It looks okay, actually, all the parts that looks like uh, suitable for printing. You can check my settings. Actually, all of them are almost default values except in the support parts. I'm using three, uh, three style support. And in quality tab, I'm using uh, 0 0.08 millimeters of layer height. Let's slice it. It's a quite small model, only about 25 grams of filament will be used. Actually, it's a design mistake that I made earlier, and I don't want to change it because our earlier videos was like that. You see that rear part of that serial mount Actually, we could just extrude that cylindrical surface uh, to the forward, so the model will be sitting on its sides. But now it's not that possible. But actually, it doesn't matter because it's a kind of uh, interior part of the serum mount. All the parts looks uh, okay. There are sections too. It's better to just check them by using that slider on the bottom and on the right side. Yep, we can continue. Now we are ready to assemble the model. We are using a generic BLDC motor. You know, uh, mostly 
used on RC motors and drones. Okay, the ball joint should be placed like that. Now you see the screw holes, but at first try actually it, that clearance is a, a little bit depend on the uh, filament too. So I switched to a new filament and I just realized that they are becoming a little bit uh, narrower. I should use uh, bigger tolerances, but it's not important. We can just force it a little bit. Yep, like that it works. I will use two screws, that will be enough. You can use four. And now uh, we fix the motor too. And the uh, gimbal is working. Let's add the servo mount. You see that holes we put on the servo mount and the gimbal shaft. Now we will use it to fix the two pieces together. I will just use a long uh, metric tree screw. I think it will work for it. Even a piece of metal rod or you know. That kind of thing will hold it. We will place servos. Actually, the orientation may change. Maybe you know that uh, servo arm will be on the rear side. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. That servo mounts are just holding the servo tight enough, but you can just uh, increase the grip. Maybe by using a kind of tape on it I, I won't use it now uh, okay this is the fun part that that rod is just uh, taken from a broken umbrella I'm just using it to show that actually it's not that important in that design the amount of load on servos are really small so even something like that will work with yep it looks okay with some adjustment on servos and the radio can just center the uh, motor, the axis. Let's connect the receiver to the servos and be ready for the tests. Okay, let's try the servos first before connecting the motor I think that's enough for demonstration purposes and Let's test the whole assembly. Now we will use it in that direction to have it like pitch and yaw axis control. Looks working. Yep, as you see, even the motor is uh, pushing the design, pushing the gimbal forwards. The servos are turning really easily because all the load is on the center, on the on the gimbal. 
That's the best part of this design. And that's it for our truss factoring system project. If you enjoyed this series, please like, subscribe to Scale Factory and check out the links in the description for the design files and the full playlist. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next project.